Hey everyone, today we're going to take a look at the Marvel Legends Controller Build-A-Figure Wave Quake 6-inch action figure. As usual, like, comment, share, subscribe, or even hit the super thanks button. Any and all engagement is appreciated. Here's a quick look at the box. On top, she's got a shield logo in red. Down to the bottom, some product information. Down to the side, an artwork of Quake channeling her powers through her gloves. The cool thing about the back of the box is a different artwork compared to the side of the box. There's also a description of Quake's character on the right side, the rest of the figures in the wave over here, and finally product information at the bottom. Down to that last side, we see a reflected artwork of Quake once again channeling that same powers through her gloves. So let's get this figure open. And out of the box, the figure is on the plastic tray. She comes with a small pistol, a swappable Mariah Hill head sculpt, one set of relaxed hands, and another set of trigger hands. There's also the controller build the figure left arm with an interchangeable fist. Because she comes with two trigger hands, Hasbro should have given her two pistols instead of just one. We're taking a look at her accessories, and first up are the regular Marvel Legends female splayed hands. These are cast in the white plastic, and they do seem a little rough, with some excess plastic along those fingers. These hands are articulated inwards, and you can also bend them outwards. Of course, in order to use those splayed hands, you would first need to pop off Quake's metallic gloves and gauntlets, and pop those splayed hands on. Just in case you ever get mixed up with those gauntlets, the right one of course has sculpted R2 on the inside, and similarly, the left one has an L1 inscripted on the inside as well. Per usual, those splayed female hands go onto the figure just fine, giving you an option to display her in a more relaxed pose. Next up are the two gripping hands. These come sculpted with trigger fingers, and there's also texture on them to show that they're gloved hands. The two hands are articulated differently. The left one is articulated in and out, while the right one is articulated up and down. She also comes with a small pistol that we've seen before on the Black Widow White Outfit release. This pistol has sharp sculpting for some tech detail on the sides, looking rather futuristic, kind of maybe like a Nerf model. And of course, she holds the pistol just fine. Her fingers are flexible and soft enough to fit the pistol into her grip. Despite having two gripping hands, she only has one pistol. So you can look for other weapons or simply use her splayed hand. And finally, we have the Mariah Hill spare head. This is cast in a flash tone plastic. The expression is rather determined, looking like she's either gritting her teeth or having a conversation on her headset. The digital dot matrix printing technique over here is well executed again. Very sharp paint applications for her high arched eyebrows, the blue paint for her eyes, as well as her dark pink lipstick and the whites in her teeth. I am particularly impressed with the sharpness of the sculpting and all the details that's coming out on her face. You can even see the lines sculpted on her eyelids, and she's got a subtle nose, even her nostrils are really sharp. And if you look closely at her teeth, you can even see where her upper set of teeth meet her lower set of teeth, with a line in the middle. So the sculpting and painting work for this face is impressive. Her hair is a separate piece of dark plastic, and I'd just like to point out one gripe that I have with this head sculpt, is that her earpiece is sculpted as one piece together with her hair, so they both look the same color, and her earpiece just looks kind of blended into her hair. Her hair is parted on the right, and it's got some good sculpting work on it. You can see the textures of her hair all the way around, and how it's swept behind her ear on the left side, with a stray strand on down the front of her forehead. And having a look at her face once again, I'd just like to point out the really subtle blush that's applied onto her cheeks as well. So I really really like this head sculpt. And the Mariah head sculpt pops on just fine onto the figure and looks really great. For the sculpt of the figure, she's only reusing the lower torso portion of the regular Slim Marvel Legends female body. She's now got those improved double hinged pinless elbows as well as knees. Her arms and legs appear to have a fuller sculpt as well, appearing to be less skinny compared to the previous regular Marvel Legends Slim body. She's got plenty of newly sculpted parts as well, and that's her head sculpt, upper torso, those metallic looking gauntlets on her forearms, as well as her belt and the straps around her thighs. And now we're taking a closer look at Quake's head sculpt, and I also really like how Hasbro has executed this one. She's looking more neutral and determined over here. Once again, it's also really sharp sculpting. 
You can see the lines around her eyes, as well as having a stronger nose over here. Paint is once again near perfect, really sharp applications of paint for her brown eyebrows. Her eyes are also brown, and she has a darker red lipstick. She doesn't really have much blush on her face right now, and her hair is sculpted in a dark brown plastic. The texture of the hair is more spiky. It reminds me a little bit of the Dragon Ball Saiyans, but I like how it looks over here because it makes her look spunky. And the great thing about these two head sculpts is that they look so different in terms of the color palette for the paint on their faces, as well as the different colored plastics for the hair, Mariah's being black and Quake's being a dark brown. The newly sculpted upper torso is also good work. There's a zip detail down the front of the chest. It's sculpted and painted in silver. It's just a little odd that it doesn't continue all the way down to the belly button, as you would expect with a regular bodysuit. Hasbro should have included at least some silver paint on this generic female lower torso. The collar is also realistically sculpted, and on her shoulders, she's got straps that are sculpted with a little bit of texture on them for a rougher fabric, and it's painted in white. Those straps go all the way and connect to the back, where there's also, surprisingly, silver paint for a backing plate that holds the straps together with a couple of rivets. On her left shoulder, there's a very sharply printed shield logo. And when you move down to her forearms, she's got those vibration manipulating gauntlets. These are cast in the metallic looking silver plastic. Nice sculpted lines and tech details down the outside of the forearm. And that leads on to a very mechanical looking glove. She's even got a couple of bumps in those metallic gloves for where her knuckles are. The great thing about this forearm is that Hasbro has continued to paint the white on the forearm so that connects well with the white gloved alternate hands. And this is how you have a regular female shield agent look with her white gloves. At her waist, she's got a utility belt with a couple of buckles and pouches. This belt is sculpted in a white plastic and those pouch details go all the way around. Likewise, on her thighs, she's got a couple of white plastic straps, and these are the same on both her thighs. Most of the figure is cast in a dark blue plastic, and that goes all the way from her torso all, all the way down to her legs. On her calves, she's got white paint, just to show those boots. I would really have loved for Hasbro to have sculpted those boots as well as the gloves on her forearms, but I suppose this would pass. And likewise, this white paint blends well with the white plastic on her feet. For articulation, her head is on a ball hinge, so that spins all the way around. But there's not much sideways tilting at all. She has a good range looking down because of the hinge, as well as a very good range upwards. There's a swivel hinge at her shoulders, so her arms can go all the way around, as well as coming out quite far. Her improved arms have an upper bicep swivel, so that spins... 360, pinless double jointed elbows that get you a very good range so she can actually touch her head. She's got a swivel hinge at the wrist so that spins 360 as well as articulating in and out. There's a mid torso ball joint so the figure can turn right as well as left. She gets a little bit of sideways tilt from that ball joint as well and she also gets a lot of range in the backward bend but not really that much coming forward. She's got ball jointed hips, so that go out to the sideways a decent bit. There's also no problems moving forward and backward. There's an upper thigh swivel, so that spins 360. Double jointed pinless knees, so they bend a very good range. There's ankle tilt upwards, as well as downwards quite a bit. And finally, ankle pivot upwards, as well as inwards. She's well articulated and her joints feel strong and sturdy, so she feels good to pose around with. Specific to Quake, I think she could have used some power effects, but it's not a big deal because you can borrow them from other characters. However, what I feel she also lacks but we don't have is a pair of metallic fists for her to change out and to have her fists clenched. For Mariah, I also think that she could have used some white fists, but you can borrow those from figures like Invisible Woman or Emma Frost. And these white fists definitely give you more display and play options for this female shield body. And with the much improved articulation in the arms as well as her knees, 
combined with the compatibility with all the Marvel Legends female hit sculpts, this body certainly has a lot of army building potential. And here she is with Sharon Carter, which is on the Marvel Cinematic Universe shield female agent body. This new body mold is definitely an improvement in terms of size and proportion. Unfortunately, the Sharon Carter head doesn't sit so well on this new body. It sits way too high and the neck is too long. However, you can kind of fudge the shield helmet from the male shield agent 2-pack. It's definitely a little too big for the body, but you can trick the perspective in photos. Quick stands at 6 and an 8 inches and that's about 15 and a half centimeters. She's a good skill with Captain America and Iron Man who of course tower over her. Also very compatible with Black Widow and Spider-Man. The fact that she has more muscular thighs makes me think that Black Widow is going to be done in this body mold pretty soon. Here she is with Red Skull and a Hydra Soldier. With an AIM Scientist and a Scientist Supreme. And a Scrawl Infiltrator and Ultron. For comparisons with other Alliance, here she is with some G.I. Joe Classified series. And some Star Wars Black series. This figure feels really good in hand and has quite interesting detail from the head sculpt to the belts and straps and the very solid articulation. She could have come with more accessories, but this is a really well-made figure with plenty of army building potential. So far, this feels like the best figure of this entire wave. I'm definitely ready to start army building more female shield agents. Please like and share this video. Let me know what you think in the comments below and subscribe to my channel for more toy reviews. Thanks for watching, take care and stay safe.